My name is Leila Saburian, and uh, Kuchulu means petite or little in Farsi, Turkish, Italian, and a bunch of other languages. No. So, how many parents do we have here? Not that many, wow. I, I guess career-driven people here. But every parent's biggest wish, for those of you who are not parents, every parent's biggest wish is to have a child that's happy, healthy, and smart. And that's always those three. And yet, childhood obesity continues to be on the rise. It has tripled since a decade ago. Kids are failing school. Less than one-third of American kids are able to pass their math or science or geography exams. And children are becoming more and more depressed. One in seven kids is diagnosed with some type of um, depression. So there is a number of um, scientific studies that show a direct correlation between unhealthy eating and poor performance in schools. My co-founders and I were passionate about contributing a solution towards this. Our vision is to improve the health, happiness, and education of children worldwide. And this journey began when my husband and I started volunteering in my daughter's school and teaching um, this, um, the children who, this was an uh, economically disadvantaged schools. we started teaching them about healthy recipes and healthy cooking from the countries that they were from or their parents were from. And we soon realized this was a great way to teach math and science. The school actually offered us money to uh, make this into a more formal concept and the neighborhood sc school started asking to um, for us to go and deliver the same lesson. So we realized there was a real opportunity here. And we actually did some more research and discovered there's a huge market in supplemental educational products. Last year alone, there was more than $90 billion, uh, 90, um, billion dollars spent on educational products, and 12, bi um, 12 million of that was um, spent right here in the US. So if we continue with the current growth we've had, we plan to be in 4,000 schools in the US within five years, and that's already a $47 million uh, revenue. And so basically our solution is called Chef Kuchulu. It's a gamified AI-empowered technology platform. The lesson begins when a child chooses a country from our 3D interactive globe and is immediately presented with fun, exciting facts about the country. As they begin cooking a healthy recipe from that country with the help of the teacher or in the case of a homework assignment with their parents, we infuse math and science related content and each lesson ends with the child learning about social responsibility and how they can make positive impact. Our project has been funded and endorsed by the National Science Foundation. These are some examples of the screens where how we infuse science or bring in math. We talk about chemistry, what happens when you saute onions. And our business model is simple. We have a B2B to C, we sell to schools. The users are teachers and students. The decision makers are the principals and the districts. And we also have, um, we leverage the schools to reach to parents directly. So our pricing strategy has been defined by the customers. We interviewed about 100 um, decision makers and asked them what would be a price they're comfortable with. They said $25 per year per student. And this is how we compare to our competitors. Now, we might seem high, but that's because you know, we have like a solution that includes ingredients and kits, and theirs is only software. Our traction to date has been great. We, we are live in 30 schools. We have um, been profitable since day one. We have um, made 256K in revenue. And um, uh, last year, we, uh, we ran some uh, impact efficacy studies, again, hosted by the National Science Foundation to discover what is the impact of our solution. And we discovered that, um, in general, after 10 lessons, children improved their math and science scores by 51%. And as a surprise, we were not even you know, really focused on teaching language arts, but we also discovered that they improved ELA or language arts by 55%. We also took a qualitative survey with um, 1,000 parents and discovered that um, about 100% of the children, after just two lessons, started trying out new vegetables, eating more healthy, and 80% of them started showing an interest in math and science. And these were kids who were hating math and science before the program began. There's a few examples of our customer testimonials. Um, like I said, we focused most of our pilots here in Silicon Valley and also a few pilots in Santiago, Chile. 
Uh, we have uh, reached um, international recognition for our innovation by the French government, Swedish government, Danish government, the US government. And this year, we, uh, last month, we were just awarded an additional uh, grant from the National Science Foundation because they were so pleased with our results from the pilot so far. <laughs> Of course, there's a number of great competitors in the market teaching STEM, um, but none of them have combined healthy eating and STEM, so we are the first to market with this approach. We do have a patent. We have great advisors such as Dr. Michael Brenner from Harvard University, who was a pioneer in teaching science through cooking, and Dr. Richard Zayer from Stanford, who teaches chemistry through cooking. And we also do hold a patent on the concept of gamification uh, of math and science through cooking. So we are trying to raise 1.5 million. We started fundraising a few months ago. We have raised 1 million in non-dilutive funds for R&D purposes. And we just need an additional 500K for sales and marketing and um, global expansion. Our immediate um, growth um, plan includes reaching out uh, the schools in California because California holds the highest number of schools in the states and we're here. Then followed by Massachusetts because most of our advisors there are there and Massachusetts schools are recognized as the best in the country, followed by New York and Texas for having the second number uh, of schools. So the EdTech um, industry has uh, seen some um, impressive results within the last decade. Um, and we hope to be, you know, we, uh, we hope to follow their path. We think we can be a, a profitable company and continue to live. But also some of the exit strategies we envision include uh, Scholastic or Amazon or one of our food partners because we do plan to have this um, partnership with a big brand that delivers the food and ingredients to each classroom. Our go-to-market strategy is simple. My background is in marketing, so this is not a part I'm worried about, but we have inbound, outbound, thought leadership, and conferences. And we have just the perfect mix of passion and experience to take this project to the next level. Um, I've worked for companies such as Yahoo, eBay, and I also served as a consultant to the Ministry of Education in France. I've also taught entrepreneurship and different languages in France, Chile, Mexico, and the US. My co-founder um, is also my husband, and he was um, a math teacher before went on to school to become an engineer, engineer has a master's, and he's um, uh, contributed to products uh, you might have heard of, such as Kindle, Amazon, Fitbit. Our nine-year-old daughter is the youngest entrepreneur in the world, I would say. <laughs> and she has actually cooked 2,000 of these recipes and served in many TV interviews, kind of our um, child uh, spokesperson. I spoke about some of our advisors, some I didn't mention, our very first board member we just um, took uh, brought on board is uh, Mr. Tom Kalinsky, who was the CEO of LeapFrog, to, um, Sony, and Mattel. And we also have Dr. Keep Teles from UC Santa Cruz. So if the health, happiness, and education of a child matters to you, come invest with us, um, partner with us, and let's take this to the next level. So I do have one very simple question. Sure. Cumulatively, your revenue is 250 something yes. K. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's about 100 K. It's, it's not uh, enough to pay for two engineers. So that means the company people are not drawing any salary. Is that correct? Um, so we, uh, we, were, we were grant funded. But yes, we, it, was, it wasn't that we weren't taking salary. It was the founders. We built it in-house, yes. And now we just took in, uh, we, we have about 750K that just came. That's from the non-dilutive fund, right? Basically, got it. So you do not treat that as a revenue to the company. No. Got it. Sorry, okay. this went up. Any other questions? Um, you know, I guess the, you're trying to improve uh, the learning of children. And I guess the question is, um, how would you kind of, you know, position such that, you know, I think this is a must have versus a nice to have? I mean, um, is there, I mean, you know, can you kind of elaborate on, on that front? 
Well, um, we, to be honest, we're not. We're positioning it as a supplemental educational tool because in order to make it a must-have, it needs to go like through state and it needs to like cover, like teach either science or math and be the only tool that teaches that. So we are taking the integrated approach to learning or 21st century. So it's a supplemental. But what makes it popular in schools is that a lot of teachers feel that the, the, the topic of uh, obesity and health education is really important, but they have no budget to teach that. And it, it and they're not their KPIs. The teachers are not measured on how healthy the kids are. But they every single teacher feels that that's one of the main issues on why children are not learning is because they're malnourished or overnourished or you know. So the, by aligning this to what teachers are being measured on, which is math and science or like in performance and improve, then it kind of makes the teacher happy because they can buy this and justify it and have a budget for it. Uh, but in reality, they love the, the, the piece that it teaches about health eating. That, that's why I'm kind of thinking, you know, the thinking is, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I, I think that you're thinking in the right direction, which is mm -hmm. um, how do you, you know, link it to the KPI of the teachers, for instance. And I think that's really sort of where I'm coming from as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is, I mean, that that's, has to do with how you eventually scale your business. And I think kind of furthering, sort of the first uh, uh, judge's question is, I mean, if you're trying to scale for 100,000 right now, mm -hmm. and you obviously trying to you have aggressive plans, I mean, which mm -hmm. is great. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like you say, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes down the road, you're gonna be over 30, 40 million dollars in three to four years, which is important and great. But I guess really fundamentally is, um, you know, how do you scale up that quickly? And, and, and so by aligning it with, I mean, whether it's government funded or other necessary or must have kind of programs, I think that will help you to scale. Yeah, the, the way we are planning to scale it is by, so we, this grant that we just got is to create additional, because right now we had a prototype from just kinder to second grade. So we're gonna make it a K through five product and having uh, a teacher dashboard added so that teachers can track performance. And that's where also the AI comes in, make it more adaptive, um, and so they can assign homework. And that, uh, and the basically that's what schools have told us. They're like, if you add this and if you align it with NGSS, we need this and there's no competitive product this year at least. By next year, somebody else might come. But if we can deliver this by next August, um, we, are, we, we feel very confident that at least in those four states, they will buy this. So uh, you mentioned the grant you got from uh, from uh, East government East government grant. So mm -hmm. uh, mentioned uh, right now it's K to two, and you plan to expand to uh, K to five. So uh, uh, do you want to elaborate more about the plan for the uh, the grant for the research and development? Other was the objective. Sure. So uh, the next three months, we are focused on improving the user experience. So this this has been up to now designed by me, and I was not a professional designer. So the first three months, we are taking like we had just onboarded our first educator, Sarah, who's here. So we're just sitting down, really improving the UX um, experience for teachers, and then making it more scalable. Because right now, after about like uh, two thousand students, the app starts crashing and stuff. So just making the back end more robust and and. And then the, the exact alignments on the teacher dashboard, making it like, uh, you know, this lesson teaches NGSS lesson 3.5 plus Common Core plus this. And, um, and this uh, within the next six months. The, and then by next August, we plan to do the uh, outbound email campaign to those four states. People talk about work-life balance. Mm -hmm. You're combining the whole family together. Yes. <laughs> and she your experience and the challenges. Um, yeah, so we, we, this was truly inspired by my daughter because I would cook her home cooked meals. I was working at SAP, loving my job actually in enterprise software marketing, but she would come home crying because the kids in her school were from um, immigrant working class who received the free lunch plan. And the free lunch plan was hot dogs, chocolate milk, um, and usually french fries. And so 
you know, I couldn't compare with that. So one day I just sat her down, I explained to her how hot dogs were made, and then she never wanted to try one again. And she went to school and she became the advocate. And that's how I ended up in school because the teacher called me and said, what, what did you tell your child? Because she's, you know, can you come give the same talk? And I did. And then the school's like, can we pay you money? And I was like, well, I thought this was an economically, you know, disadvantaged school. So that's when I saw the opportunity. But it's, you know, like my daughter has been so, she was so shy and reserved. She's an um, introvert, and it's been really nice to see her flourish. Our youngest kid now, you know, basically she's a food taster. She tastes everything, <laughs> but, but she doesn't have company shares. But it is, because um, <laughs> the older one does, 6%, but she, she literally, you know, she has to do videos constantly. She t she's, you know, she's the model in many of the photos, and she's the one who inspires other kids to try it, and they kind of trust her more than they trust us, so it's been great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.